So our next example would be number 12 on this assignment. <clears throat> We've got sine of x plus sine of 2x minus pi over 2. Now we talked extensively about using the sum and difference formulas for both sine and cosine. Actually, maybe just sine. Uh, so I just wanted to see one more example where you guys worked with it right here. So I think it's pretty clear we got to break out this 2x minus pi over 2 because sine of x is just not going to work well with this quantity. So it's sine of the first times cosine of the second. And you can do one of two things. You can say that, sorry, I'm not going to confuse you with that. I'm just going to keep rolling along. There's a pi over 2 here. I'm going to put a minus because there's a minus in between. That's how sine, uh, the sine formulas work for the difference. Then it's cosine of the first times the sine of the second. And that all equals 0. So you get sine of x plus, oh, cosine of pi over 2. That is 0. 0 times sine of 2x is 0. And then this will be minus cosine of 2x times 1. So it's minus cosine of 2x. So when you see this, you go back to your formula sheet and you ask yourself, what would be the best version of cosine of 2x to change into? Since there's a sine of x right there, seems like sine of x minus 1 minus 2 sine squared of x would be our best choice for that. So then we just distribute this negative to both parts. It appears we have quadratic structure. If I did a w substitution, um, you know what? How about I skip the w substitution on this one? Because I think it's simple enough structure where we can just say, Hey, to get negative 1, you need 1 times 1 with one of them being negative. To get 2 sine squared, you need 2 sine times sine. There's no other options. We need the middle number to be positive, which means the 2 times the 1 has to be positive. And it works out. So then this quantity equals 0. As does this one. Add 1 to both sides, divide by 2, sine equals a half. On the second one, subtract 1 from both sides. You get sine equals negative 1. And we just ask ourselves, where does sine equal a half? In quadrant 1 and quadrant 2. It's going to be the pi over 6's. 5 over 6 and 5 pi over 6. Where does sine equal negative 1? Down here, 3 pi over 2. So these two solutions were from sine of x is equal to a half. This solution was from sine of x is equal to negative 1. All right, highlighting these two right here. You'll find out why. I'm going to go over this side of the board. It's getting lonely. So 6 sine squared of x plus 3. Cos, no, it's still sine. <clears throat> All right. Um, 
is this factorable? Maybe. I'm going to do a W substitution. I'm not seeing it right away. So 6w squared plus 3w minus 4 equals 0. So if you're talking negative 24, that adds up to 3. It's not going to be negative 24 and 1. It's not going to be 2 and negative 12. 3 and 8, no. 4 and 6, no. Oh. It's not factorable. Quadratic formula. Negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2 times a. Yes, we have to do the quadratic formula in these. So this is 9 plus 96. So w is going to be approximately, let's see, negative 3. You got negative 3 plus root 105 over 12. And then you've got negative 3 minus root 105 over 12. I'll get the decimals for those two. First one I get 0 0.604. The second one I get negative 1.104. All right, now make sure that you go back and replace sign for the w's. So technically, we're tasked with solving the equations sine is equal to approximately 0 0.604. And we've got sine is approximately negative 1.104. we got to do inverse sines. Just like on that previous example, we did inverse tangent. So if you do the inverse sine of both sides of this equation, and again, make sure you're in radian mode. Otherwise, you'll get wonky answers. You get 0.649. X is approximately 0.649. Here's what that means. The angle in which taking the sine gives you 0.604, sine is positive here and here. So you're talking about the radian measure 0.649 radians in this quadrant and 0.649 radians in this quadrant. Your calculator only computes one of them, unfortunately. The 0.649 is this one. Your job is to figure out what this one is. All you have to do is take away, this is the same reference angle. So it's, it's pi units minus 0.649 radians. So x is equal to this one and approximately pi minus 0 0.649 radians. Two point four nine three. So these two solutions are paired with our equation. If I do inverse sine of, of this one, uh, it just it gives me like no like an error, domain error. So there's no real solution to this equation because if you think about what the graph of sine of x looks like, it has a peak of one and a valley of negative one. It never crosses negative 1.1. So they never intersect. There's no solution to it. On to 18. Uh, come on now. Quick, quick, quick.
3 cosine squared of x plus 5 cosine of x minus 6 equals 0. Oh boy. 9 and 2. Okay, it's not factorable either, I don't think. So w is cosine of x. 3w squared plus 5w minus 6 equals 0. All right, so you do the quadratic formula on both of those. And you get W is approximately 0 0.808, and W is approximately negative 2.47, meaning cosine, hopefully that was okay that I skipped the quadratic formula process. I think we know how to do that. So solutions to this one, solutions to this one. Now right away, I know that this one just doesn't, straight up doesn't work because it never equals negative 2.47. Another explanation would be, think of cosine as the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse. If the hypotenuse is always the largest side in a right triangle, then any time you have a ratio with the hypotenuse on the bottom, it will always be less than 1. Okay, It will always be less than 1 in terms of between 0 and, and 1. Like it could be negative 0.7, you know what I mean? But uh, yeah. If I do inverse cosine here, I get x is approximately 0 0.630. The perspective we're looking at is that cosine is positive here and here. 0 0.630 radians is about there. But there is also a 0 0.630 radian measure here. So we found this. It's that measure. Here's our second one. It's almost 2 pi units. We're just taking away the 0 0.630. So your second solution is 2 pi minus 0 0.630 which is approximately 5.653. All right, do we have enough time for this last group? All right, so just the number of solutions I just wanted to make sure everybody's on the same page with this. You're just, your job is to figure out between 0 and 2 pi what's going on. So sine of 20x, where does sine equal 0? It equals it at 0 and pi. There's two solutions between 0 and pi. However, there's 20 times as many solutions because of the, the inflation of this angle right here. So there's 40 solutions for number 20. So I guess just make, sense, make sure you understand how many solutions between 0 and 2 pi a regular x would yield, and then multiply by the number inside there. Like cosine of x only equals negative 1 at pi. So there's really only one solution, but you've got the times 50 here. And when you look at something like tan squared, keep in mind that you're square rooting both sides, which means there's plus or minus equals tan. We talked about how the pi over 4 is equal tangent. Tangent's positive here, here, negative here, here. There's 1, 2, 3, 4 solutions between 0 and 2 pi that make tangent equal 1. So it's 4 solutions times 14. There's 56 total solutions between... Uh, between 0 and 2 pi when you've got a 14 in there. So, and then this one, um, I'm kind of out of time here, so I might put the in the description how that one goes. All right, thanks for watching, guys.